All that, folks. We bring chaos to your face, yeah. Oh, uh, Jesus. My, my friend Vic just sent me some guys. I was gonna do this video. I was gonna do a video talking to you about talking about stuff because a lot of people have been asking me to do videos on Onision and uh, personally I'm not doing it. Because everybody, okay, let me just let me just tell you guys something. Honestly, man, honestly, folks. Dreams could come become a legal nightmare for players. Oh boy. Let's go look, guys. Shit. Can I just talk can we just talk about this game stock commercial before we get to the heavy shit? What the fuck? We got two dogs, one's Mickey, one's goofy, and then we got a duck that's looking like Donald. That's weird. Anyways, let's get to it. Is it for the players? <clears throat> yeah, it's saying it'll become a legal nightmare. I don't like it. I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Ross Saunders. And this is for the players, the pop culture PlayStation podcast for the 40 years of Oh, the folks, let me just uh, situate myself in my chair a little bit. This PlayStation conversation. This conversation <coughs> happens every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time on YouTube and 8 a.m. on iTunes and other podcast services. If you'd like to be a part of future conversations, please join us on Facebook, Discord, comment below, if you don't want to join us, join us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash pop culture. So that's what you see is not up there of an interest. Please support us on Patreon. You normally can watch it, watch us record this show live. At some point we'll do that, I promise. And, and we are watch. also, there's, if you want to show the love for films on your body, head to pop culture and start oh, that way, right. shop. Give me a shirt like this. And like this new design, I'd like to call it pop culture. Pop fracking. Yeah, pop, pop, pop fracking. Then we are on twitch.tv slash the pop culture. Man, I'm gonna go ahead and get to the point of this video. <laughs> I mean, I'm not here to watch these two pop around. We gotta get to the point. It's a, the, a exceptional zombie. Mm. Like, it's, it is, as I've mentioned mm. before, um, I said it in the review, which I'm from one of the channel as well. Mm. It's this awesome setup where uh, Resident Evil 7. It was an iconic meme of the two identical Spider Man stories. It's just not. <laughs> Trying to see because guys, I'm trying to find some that's internet backlash, which is minor. We have no, no, no. They play it, and because they didn't pay for it, they'll therefore appreciate it further. And if anything, the game will get a lovely resurgence because people, are, people, you'll notice people are more like forgiving when it didn't cost them nothing. Yeah, for sure. Oh. Oh. So, the initiative is shaping up to be something special. I can't wait to I'm very, very excited. To see I'm trying to get to the point, guys. Sorry. Because competition... <laughs> it can kind of fit this un, like online... In, online interactivity mm. is its own sort of subcategory mm. that doesn't have a rating. Mm. So, the game itself will likely be G or PG with online interactivity. Mm. We're therefore saying a portion of this cannot be rated. See, with, with the PT thing, I can't imagine a world where Konami just let that sit. Oh, fuck. Own. Oh, yeah. Okay, so they're talking oh, about... There's going to be dicks. There's going to be dicks. There's going to be butt sex. Like, I'm there's going to be torture porn. Oh, wow. Guys, this, guys Dreams mm. is going to have a lot of things. Because, again, if we can all... Because people are going to run buck wild. If you can make anything, you won't make a dick. Okay? We go people are gonna make dicks. Dicks it just it is everything. It's just 
like, you know, folks like me are going to try and make games and stuff, but most people are going to make fucking dicks, vaginas, whatever they can. There's going to be some porn in there. There's going to be some dream porn. <laughs> I wonder if I can get a I wonder if I can get the coffee right on drink. <laughs> but, is, but honestly, I do kind of feel like, you know, we got to be careful, guys. So, like, if you want to do a fan game, again, don't do fan games on Nintendo because those are still no-nos. Because, they, you know, Nintendo, Nintendo's light loosening the grip on YouTubers. And they haven't really loosened their grip on fan-created stuff. Ergo, why some of us still want to do like a Mario, our own Mario movie, but really can't. But um, there are some things. There are some. But I, I did write a script one day. Uh, I'll probably share that with you guys because it, that's pretty much only. That's pretty much all the way it's going. That's pretty much the only time you're really gonna hear it. But yeah, again, I want to try and make I want to try and make the games I've been wanting to make on on um little big plan for a while, and I I almost was done with mine. I was like, oh shit, dreams? Okay, you can do this shit, you can do that shit. Okay, 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 I get you, I get you, I get you. And you know, guys, I want to make a I kind of want to make an Airform Gym Van game and call it. Earthworm Jim 3, the unofficial sequel to Earthworm Jim. Or, Booger Man. Yes. Booger Man. Yeah, I just want to make unofficial sequels to this shit. I don't know why I feel I just want to. I want to. So bad. Do, 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 do. Because on Sakamoto, who picks and flicks in the night? I, I didn't know I was here. Because, man. Besides, I was going to do this video with X regularly, but she's, you know, you know how X can be sometimes. Moody. Especially when you're you're around, you know who and she's in X can't deal. <sighs> I really need to go, you know, really, I need to go hang out with X by myself. Because I know we haven't done that in a while. Oh, by yourself. Is that does that mean it's gonna be a date? Shut up on Sakamaru, it's not gonna be that. Dude, it's a date. I'm going to grab your finest suit. On Sakamaru, don't touch my Don't touch my fucking Armani. Don't touch my fucking Armani suit. It's like my best one. No, I'm getting one of my other ones. Oh, tell me like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, or can you, like, ratings lock your game in the game? I would Maybe. imagine so. And if your account's a minor account, like my son's is, you know, it's R18 plus, it's like you can't. Um, I think there's probably, cause the, one of the people, I don't know, man, this is going to be, this is like them in Australia, so I don't think we're, I mean, I think there should be some parental controls, maybe, so then no kid walks in and plays, oh, my God. The the A simulator and it's just an anal simulator. I mean, I know it's not really gonna happen like that, but maybe some parental controls for kid for the kids who have like, you know, who have accounts on PlayStation but they are technically minors. You know, like some parental controls in there would be pretty all right to stop that. <sighs> and. I'm just saying, guys, we gotta, be, you know, you gotta be careful with your fan games because, you know, I know Sega doesn't really care if you make a fan game because that's, that's the people I'm banking on. You know, because my whole bread and butter is basically just trying to, my whole bread and butter is the fact that I want to make more fan-related stuff on Dreams and, uh, Yeah. And, and, yeah, folks, um, it's just gonna be, no, uh, sure, yeah, they, they're a little bit more tight. And what I mean by tight. 
<laughs> what I mean by tight is, well, you know. Fill in the blanks here, folks, because I can't, I can't say it, or fucking YouTube will have a connection, but you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. Rub it up. Biggest thing you find remember? What, what was that? What, rub it up? Is that something you're trying to, is that like a new catchphrase you're working on? Yeah. I like it. Rub a dub, though. Yeah, rub a dub, what? It, it just doesn't sound right. It's like, it sounds like you're giving it, it sounds like you're giving yourself a hand job, like you're going, rub a dub, rub a dub, rub a dub, rub a dub, rub a dub. It just sounds like that. Fuck you, man. I'm, keep, I'm keeping it. Oh, yeah, folks, do you like me saying rub a dub? Because Bugsy doesn't know if you know, because Bugsy thinks it's stupid. I just think it's kind of, it's just, I mean, I get what you're trying to do, but it's like, eh. Yeah, like, we can't put that on a fucking t-shirt. Rub a dub. That just doesn't sound right. Can you stop copying my voice sometimes? It gets kind of creepy. All right, all right, all right. I'm just saying, rub a dub sounds kind of weird. And yeah, we can put it on a t-shirt. We can got a fucking teespring, and I can just, we can just sell those fucking t-shirts, man. We can go down to the plaza and sell these fucking t-shirts and be like, rub a dub. That's like, again, that catchphrase doesn't make, that catchphrase isn't that cool. Oh, dude, salute your shorts is on. Oh, my Joe, it is. I miss so one of the biggest things about online online sharing and online marketplace sort of stuff is they it can kind of fit this un, like online in, online interactivity mm. is its own sort of subcategory mm. that doesn't have a rating mm. so the, they're therefore saying I who get like who gets the pull down who who gets the shakedown mm. the creator of it in like mm. in dreams or is it Media molecule themselves, like, hey, you need to get this user to take this down because it's the honest the answer. The honest answer of this would be would be in their terms of services, right? Mm. So if you were to read that terms of service, I, I imagine there would be a big section about you cannot create any for any product you create must be your own intellectual property, blah blah blah, blah. Mm. and like that would be their own, presumably their own way out. So that's mm. the only way that the media molecule could prevent what would become an onslaught of fuck. Uh, but it says it could be though, guys. It doesn't mean that it will. I mean, probably. I mean, we got a we got a Silent Hill game on fucking um, Little Big Planet three, and Konami hasn't done shit. Because again, I feel like they feel like it's just it it's on fucking it's on fucking Little Big Planet. What? It's not really gonna be a big thing. And, and you know what? Some of us want PT because you know Konami, you're just kind of, you, you know. You guys are kind of dicks. Sure, you gave us Bomberman, but you also made Metal Gear Solid survive. No one wanted fucking zombies in their Metal Gear Solid game, you motherfuckers. I know I sure the fuck didn't. Me and Bugsy were like really debating should we fucking, you know, get the game just so we can stream it for like a few hours. And Bugsy and I were just like, no, fuck this. We love fighting zombies. We love fighting zombies in various games. Well, maybe, you know, sometimes in Call of Duty. Sometimes. But, I don't know, Bugs. What do you think? What do you think? Eh. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of copyright material on, um, Little Big Planet. I don't see no one else, like, uh, saying, hey, Media Molecule, take this shit down. So, I don't know. I think we're gonna be cool. Again, I don't know. Maybe we, maybe people might sue. Maybe people might not sue. It, it's pretty. It's, I don't know. It could go. It could go either way. But I would like if I would like for it if it didn't because I want to try and make my own freaking Sonic MMO. <laughs> or maybe not a Sonic MMO. Just a demonstration of what that could be. And uh, don't look at that. I wasn't. I wasn't looking at trying to mod my switch. If, and if I do, I'm gonna get another switch. Just uh, I'm gonna get another switch to 
basically do things. If if I was. Not like I will. But anyways, guys, it's it's basically Star Trek Discovery got cancelled. I heard that I heard even though it was kinda bad and doing kinda middling things, it was still okay. Hmm. That kind of sucks, man. <laughs> too bad we can't do. Can we? Too bad we can't do that freaking star. That Star Trek stream we love so very, very much. Oh, I love it, but you know. Yeah, you know, you know how it is. You know how it is on tomorrow. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna fight with CBS on this because they the kind of people that don't care. I you know, I, you know, I freaking set up this, um, I set up our online session, our gameplay sessions and actual episodes. They're going to be like, bitch, no, no, motherfucker, no, motherfucker, no. Oh, my God. What is this? The Chris Chan Chronicles magazine. This, what is this? I was going to look at this and we will look at this. But what is this? I don't know, Bugsy. Let's dive in, man. What is this? Oh my God! It's RPG Maker game. It's made. It's it's about Chris. Oh shit! They really they really highlighting the filthiness of Chris's house, aren't they? Oh shit! Yeah. God dang. Oh god. Like see, what are we looking at? I don't know. I'm scared. <laughs> Nothing is more scary than probably being Chris Chance House because we both know it's filthy. Dude, we know. We've seen it. We have seen videos, I bet you that's not even the worst of it. Ah, oh, no, no, no. Folks, in the studio, we keep our fucking shit clean. Like, if anybody wants to stop by, we usually just clean the sh We clean. Well, Bugsy does start mop. There's a lot of, there's a lot of rooms to mop. There's like, we, you know. We got we got our usual recording booth where we're usually recording, like where you're hearing us right now. And we got our usual we got our usual we got our uh, game room. Yes, we got a game room in the studio. There's nothing there's nothing wrong with that. You know, sometimes you want to just blow up some steam. We got a you know I don't think we'll ever show you guys a tour, but yeah, we got a game room. Uh, writer's room, mostly me and Bugsy and Har usually are in that room, locked for like a, for like half a day, and we're just like, okay, okay, let's figure this out. Let's... But shit, Chris's, Chris's whole house is just so, oh my god, what is this supposed to be? I don't know. I guess this is about to be kind of an RPG maker thing. Oh, Chris is actually going to go outside and do things? I don't know. Oh, God. It's Sonic 2. Sonic 2s are here. Oh, Jesus. Why do you think I'm scared? Is this going to go anywhere? I think it's going to go. Well, you know, there's, there's a weed. I pick weeds. Keep my town clean as well as I pick safe. Anyway, moving on. Another way. Why do you know about that? I usually like to run. It keeps, it keeps me going faster. Uh, what's going on? 
I don't know, but you know, maybe we'll play it. Maybe we won't. Maybe we won't cringe when we play it. Uh, I don't even use. We don't even. We use the grit or print cringe the right way. And, uh, yeah, this is making me cringe. Not like this is cringe. But this is making me cringe because anything of the game dealing with Chris is just. I don't even know. Uh. But his room is at. Sing a certain song. I took my ride right, retired from doing that in, in videos. I tired. I retired from doing that in videos. Ah, uh, come on, Bugsy. You know you want to sing it. No, no, I don't. You sing it outside videos. I'm not doing it, man. I think this is good though. Okay. Uh, Why? Because it's a game about Christian. It probably will be something either amazing or just weird and weird as fuck. Who knows? I'm going with weird as fuck. You know, how about we just how about this person like adapts and stuff from the animated the animated show with Sonic Chew. Now, that would be great. You just want, you just want an, you just want a freaking level where you're going inside Chris's nuts like in the actual show. Yep. Tell me that wouldn't be funny. There you go. Look at that. Look at that smart. Please sleep. Hmm. Good character. Good character. Yes. Good cheeks. I'm green soulful eyes. I'm green soulful eyes. What? What? What is? What? Is, aren't you going like? Magic Chan, you're the apple of my eye. No bit of this Sonic Chu Dick. Well, and your stripes. Ah, Bugsy, you're dumb. <laughs> Is there anything else? It's my, it's my style, my head, my yeah, because I've we've seen this before. We've seen this very. What? No! Don't you guys use mother? Don't use mother three imagery in this, please. Because this was actually because this right here when Lucas is going through the where Lucas is going through the freaking yeah. going through the freaking fields is a very emotional moment. Oh God, it's God Jesus in the bear. Oh God. Oh God, it's God Jesus in the bear. Oh God, they, they remember. They remember. God, Jesus in the bear. <laughs> For those of you that don't know what that means, the reason they they changed Chris's name, you know, Chris Chris had his name changed because the bear called him Chris Christine Kristen, and he just went with it. So it was like you thought that power of God, Jesus, and the bear. So that's the that's the thing. It's a lot more exciting as we're making it sound, but that's what happened. Oh God! <laughs> the power of God in Jesus. <laughs> okay, okay, I was like, okay, Bugsy. Let's get into what you were actually going to do. Because you're close to finishing the second episode of All My Gaming Goddess, right? Mm -hmm. 
Oh God. I hope people don't think I just put that in. I hope people don't think I just put that in there. I just put Chris Chan in there because he's associated with the Hyperdimension Neptunia series because he's not. He's not even associated with my thing. I just felt like it was something funny we could do before I get into the uh, plot stuff. And because the episode I'm doing is about Vert. It's about, you know, G and Vert uh, kind of together. I thought it'd be kind of poignant to put them, to have them, to have you guys kind of uh, get kind of a feel of how, you know, get another kind of feel of how... And uh, the episode is really going to play out. Or at least the one thing that triggered the arc that I'm going to do for this. So hold up. I'm a telepathic bulldog. And I just read your mind. Look, I know you've been using a moisturizer. So we're going to go all the way to the end of this. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not close to the end of this. <laughs> ah, bless you, Bugs. Thanks, man. Oh, hello there. My name is Bert, and I am the goddess of Limba. See, Bugsy, like... See, but uh, I think you should redo the... I think you should try to redo the first episode of it. Like, do the audiobook of it again so people actually <laughs> get it. <laughs> so, so people get another chance to watch it. Oh, so you want me to just redo it? Yeah, should, yeah, I think we should. I have introduced myself, but I believe that you already know who I am. Is that correct? <laughs> hmm. So it is true that you possess the power of interdimensional interaction. And you guys wonder why I did the VR events with, like, a Bugsy and not just a regular person. Not just a regular everyday Joe. Because, you know, we got, we got, we got hair animes with an everyday Joe. Who gets powers gradually, but... See, I wanted to do this with an alternate Bugsy simply because... I just think it'd be kind of fun. Because what you know about Prime... Bugsy, you're breaking the fourth wall? Dude, let me do this. Because what do you know about the other... What do you know about me and the other Bugsies, eh? Better on Zuckerberg? Yeah. You're not breaking the fourth wall. We're good. I'm sealing that up. I'm sealing that shit up with some masking tape. Masking tape is not going to fix the fourth wall when I break it. Oh, fuck you. Let me do... Let me do my thing. You do your thing. All right, all right, all right. What do you know about us other Bugsies, right? That we can cop dimensions, right? So, it kind of just fits with this. <laughs> but let's get to the actual point of the... Let's get to the point of this. <laughs> okay, which one? Excuse me. My love for this album has overflowed a little too much. Okay, give us a minute. I think we have something right here. But then... I explained my concept to the water before. I'm trying to find the... Uh... There's no way the station's name would ever be on such a stupid game. I won't allow it, she said. And so it was with me. Trying to find that one right I there the because it's important. Things, it's actually important. It's actually important to the story, and I gotta find it. When I was then, I imagine Ruby as something. It was, it was the one with the cookbook, and I can't find it. Hold up. Because all these events have importance, but these two are more important for the episode at hand. <laughs> 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 
it has become quite normal for me to drop in like this, hasn't it? So I came by today to ask for a little of your advice on an issue Leanbox is. See, but the thing about G is he, you know, like in the actual VR bits, he's help he he helps he helps Vert. And there's some, there's certain things, there's certain extra events I made up for the show just to make it a little bit more, uh, ah, oh, believable with Vert and, believable with Vert and Gene, how they are. Because he's the kind of dude that would, he's the kind of dude that will be, he would be there for you, like, unconditionally. He'd be like... You know, because he's like there for the, he's there for them like unconditionally sometimes because he really does he really does care for them all. But he knows he has to choose one. But that won't become a factor until later on. Not even the first season. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna tease you guys a little bit, but Curtis here's the thing. I'm trying to find the actual People thing. from other nations have always pointed out that hardware from <laughs> Lean Box is too big and bulky. I do believe compact hardware is ideal, but at the end of the day, I want to give people high-end, high-space hardware. I believe higher specs open the possibilities for gaming, and a machine like that could handle any genre. Do you not agree? However, using high-performance parts like that will always increase the size. And I cannot wait around for smaller parts to be designed and created. Hmm. Yes, that's it, isn't it? They do say that bigger is better. Hmm. And if compatibility with old games is truly necessary, then my policies are not mistaken. Like, but even though I'm not saying for anything for this exchange, there, he's like, he's, but in the actual thing that I wrote, he's like, that's true, but you could go a little, you could, you could go a little bit smaller, maybe make, maybe make the hardware a little slimmer, you know, for all the, you know, for people that don't have, like, big gaming shelves, you know what I mean? And she goes, oh, I didn't think of it like that. You have really given me something to think about, you know, that yeah. stuff. Let's see. <sighs> I feel much lighter now. I rarely have an opportunity to ask someone outside my nation for advice like this. Thanks to your help. And you're probably like, well, why does why does your character know? Why is your character giving them advice anyway? Because he's a king and he knows how to run. He knew how to run his own nation, so. It just seemed kind of natural. Again, remember, G's timeline is just a runoff of Prime's timeline. Breaking the fourth wall? Yeah, kind of doing this as myself and in, in character at the same time. Oh, like, that's not going to get confusing. <laughs> oh, shut up. Let me do my thing. <laughs> I was able to reorganize my thoughts again. <laughs> oh. It is raid time. I mean, it is time for an important meeting, so I must. And he basically goes, "You're going, you're going to play four guys online, and you're going to go on a raid." Am I wrong? <laughs> like, you know me way too well. Well, Vert, I just know how you are. I mean, yes, you'll do you'll do important things, but when it comes to like your online gaming, you uh, you overdo it a lot. And trust me, I've seen more I've seen more things. And maybe when I visit uh, Leanbox, maybe what maybe I'll uh, help you out with your gaming addiction a little bit. You need to curb some of that stuff just a little bit. Trust me, I know how good, I know how good 
Uh, online gaming is, especially if you're doing it all by yourself sometimes and you're playing you're playing various MMOs that you love. You know? You know, stop on by. Don't be surprised when I do. My lead. I have other duties given to me aside from being the goddess of lean box. I have a mountain of administrative things, such as various plans and tactical policies to decide upon. It goes Bert. I know you're just going to go raid. It's kind. I think you should just do a little bit of your work, too, so then, you know, you don't lose any shares, you know? Because I know how it's important to you guys. So, you know, just, I just say, I just say, don't lay around my Neptune now. In a TPS view, various stage elements can be destroyed, and in order to boost its visual impact, all playable characters are robots. I just want to say one thing, though. Of course, the mechanic is Uni's dear friend, Netgear. Uh, regardless of the fact that it has Uni and Netgear in the game, kind of filling out some some fantasy that Bird uh, has. You know, people say like, oh, but Bird mm -hmm. likes Bird likes little girls and stuff. No, it's a lot more deeper than that because when you really start thinking about it, and you know, for guys online, gives you a little bit more depth into Bird and how she is. I realize that it's more. Vert just wants a little sister, and she really doesn't know how to actually kind of express it. And she probably gets more ideas from the anime she watches. And it's kind of, it's just kind of how, it's kind of how she interprets things. Like you know, like the whole, um, like the whole where she's like, "We're gonna free the goddesses, and the goddesses will bless the union of me and my little sister." Like that. I really feel is just Bert's way, like Bert not knowing how to really have a little sister in most of her um, knowledge of little sisters really comes from the anime she watches because she kind of does this thing for the uh, goddess in the game that she talks to and basically goes something like that. But there will be a four goddess adaptation um, it's not going to be a full part of the season. Mm, probably like 10 episodes at least. <laughs> you guys are like, but Bugsy, like, when is that going to happen? Don't worry when it's going to happen. It's going to happen, but not now. <laughs> but I swear to you, it's going to be a little bit, it's going to be like how it is. In the, it's going to be like how it is in the game. Just DBs in it, and he gets like this extra super rare character. He's like a... Like since, like since the game is modeled after Gus's, he actually gets, since he isn't gonna be in the game and he uses his name, he uses his name. He gets like this special character that's really just, he's the only, he's like the only guy who has it because he's like the only Chaos Lord that's playing the game, and the person gives him that. It's kind of like, it's kind of like Dot Hack, you know how, um. Like how, you know, Legend of Twilight, how he gets, how the main character gets the hero of the, hero of the world, and he gets, a uh, he gets the kite character. Again, you know, he gets the kite character, like that specific character model. He gets that. But any other, any other things from Dot Hack will probably not be even in it. <laughs> Although I do remember, I, I'm still playing the game, mind you, so I want to represent that more fairly and accurately, just with, just with, uh, just with the, with just, uh, the other characters, and I want, and you know, I want to change a few things about Uzume not, like, actually, uh, coming along, because I actually want her to be a part of the actual story. I actually want her to be a part of the actual story. Because I feel like it was a straight up cop out that you have her in the game, right? She's, But she's not like she is not like a playable character 
or even contributes to the story. She just like plays by she's playing by herself and she's going fishing because she's like the she's like the personification of a dream cast. So she's going fishing. Get it? She's a big, you know, big the cat. But she calls that little, like, little familiar thing that she has, Umio. Which, I actually kind of want Umio to be in the game, too. I want Umio to be in this version, too. Um, just kind of there. You know, kind of there. But having his own, like, uh, little character avatar thing. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I just want, you know, I just have a lot of, I have a lot of plans for this show. But it's not it's not what here it's not what you came here for. Rom and Ram are a clever pair of analysts. Also, you use heavy weapons to knock enemies and whole stages down. It will be supremely exhilarating, let me assure you. The game is based on robots, but by inserting Uni's voice and cutscenes of her in between the action, the player can see how cute she is in the cockpit. This is the ultimate marriage of Moe and Mayhem. And let's be honest, we all we all would get this just simply because simply because this would be a spin-off, but it would technically be Vert's game. Because everybody has like a game. Like everybody, like everybody in the main cast, other than Neptune, because like the whole series is her. But everybody gets their own like little spinoff game to themselves. And Bert's spinoff game would have been Four Guys Online, but they not a lot of people like Bert. I really want to change that. I really want you all to see who what Bert who Bert on the inside really is. And that is. That has never changed, and that's why the ep that's why the second episode is taking so long for me to make and, and you know and uh film you know and record my voice and everything. It's taking that long because I really want to show that Bert, she she just she's a lonely person. She's not outwardly lonely like how um how Noir is. Her loneliness she likes to hide. You know, with games, with games and anime and stuff, and she just has this regal own mm. elegance to her, but it's really just to hide how lonely she is sometimes. Again, why she loves Moe and, and why she loves Moe so much. Well, I personally would love a cutscene mm. of Uni making an entrance by smashing the basilicom wall as she sang, "Let's party." That about does it for my general explanation. What do you think? Is this a game you would play? Hey, you know, what, I, what the, other thing, the other thing that shows this is how, you know, Vert kind of says, like, it's just natural for her to keep visiting, visiting the player like this. Meaning, we're kind of the person she wants to hang out with the most because we're not... We're not the goddesses who she hangs out with frequently. We're just a person that kind of, in a way, gets her. And you guys are probably like, Bugsy, why are you going this deep with Bert? Because, guys, this is what I've noticed about her. Playing the games, pl playing the games, watching the cutscenes. It's just things I've noticed about her. And because of that, I'm going to incorporate some things in there. You guys were like, Bugsy, that's going to be way too serious, though. Yeah, I get you. But the, the show is going to be jokey. Don't think that it is. It's going to have, like I said, like I said to you, all those, like that, you know, last year. It's going to have its moments of levity. It's going to have its moments of seriousness. But it's also going to have its comedy. And I feel like I want to give Vert some character development. I want to really explore, explore that mind of hers. And don't say I want to explore her titties. We all, okay, let's just be real. We all want to do that. <laughs> I'm the first one to want to do that. You're all, you're, you're all guilty of that. 
I see the po I see the porn, guys. I ain't stupid. I'm selling it. Of course, a savvy gamer like yourself would want to play this. Hearing you say this has inspired me greatly. But then... I explained my concept to Noir before, but... There's no way the station's name would ever be on such a stupid game. I won't allow it, she said. And so it was rejected. And, but, I my but that actually is going to be a later plot point for like an episode. It's going to be like a side plot where, where, um, where she is like, you know, Noir, it would make her happy if you would just give her the, give her the free reign for this game. I mean, it could strip in you guys as, it could strip in you guys as shares. So, you know, and you guys are probably wondering, Am I going to treat Lily Ranks as an actual thing in the world? Uh, I guess. I don't know. Maybe. Kind of. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm just going to have people make passing jokes about it. Original plans around using myself as the game's main character. When I started to highlight the younger sisters, though, it just became this. But I am beginning to feel that it would be a waste to give up at this point. Going off mm. your impression, I should approach Neptune mm. and Milan about it as well. If it is popular with them, then I will work with Noir and take it in a direction... And for those of you guys are saying, wait a minute, so... G is going to be in a side plot in one episode, so who's going to be the main focus of the episode if he's not going to be there? Oh, don't you worry. I like giving guys is a harem show, but I also want to give spotlights to characters that don't really get, that don't really get a lot of love, or just they get pushed to the back depending on which game it is. So, I don't know. Maybe we might actually, uh, May it be an episode about C Max and Alfie Mojax. Or or an episode or the main plot is an episode with Where you? Who knows? Working in the game shop, who knows? I can't really tell you what I'm work I can't really tell you what I'm thinking. Not yet anyway. But uh things are gonna be amazing. Agree with. Okay, that's it. I must revive my plan and organize my presentation so I can show her immediately. Thank you for listening to me, player. I will take my leave for the day. I may actually get more into Bert's, like, mind. I may do a video where it's more I'm talking about more of her mind. You know, just reinstating some of the stuff I said. But it's no. Oh, my bro's pumping his music again. Why are you gonna let him in the studio? Because I had no choice. Hey, hey Bugsy. Hello, player. Since you know all about Bird, do you know she's wearing pennies in this? I'm talking about her own I'm just saying, do you know she's wearing it? Well, I'm, just, I'm just the guy who wants to know, you know what I'm saying? Excuse me, this is very new to me. My world is spinning a little. <laughs> I can feel your passionate gaze on me. Well, how is it then? Does it suit me? I suppose I will take these off for a little while. Huh? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you, in this scene, he actually catches her instead of her falling on the bed. He goes like, you know, you got to be careful if you're going to be wearing, if you're not going to be wearing actual prescription glasses. 
If you're going to be wearing prescription glasses, you really should be wearing your fake ones. How embarrassing of me. That was so unbelievably disgraceful. I only wish to show you a different side to me. That's why I wore these glasses. But when borrowing from Chica, I only paid attention to the style, not realizing these were prescription. I have some glasses that I use as a disguise. Well, like I said, Bert has a very... Sometimes when she's talking to people, she has a very proper way of actually speaking to people. So that's why he always gives her the nickname, you know. And he gives her the nickname Princess. And that makes Bert very, like, flustered. But happy. And the fact that he used to be king, but, mo but more importantly, he used to be a prince before all that. He just is... She goes, it's... it's is in is in one of these things, and probably get, I'm probably gonna talk about him within like a little mini episode because I want to really just I'm gonna show off because in the next episode I'm really gonna show off what game industry is, what it really is, really, and all this other stuff because i um, you know I'm doing kind of a because I realize I'm doing kind of a piss poor job with that. And you guys. For those of you that don't know Hyperdimension Neptunia, I'm not really doing the best job for you guys. Like, I'm not just trying to make this for the fans. I'm trying to make it for you guys. Even though it may not be what is in the actual games, I want you guys to be like, well, this, I mean, if, if Bugsy is this inspired to make this, maybe I should actually check this, check these games out. May I might like something about it. May I might enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You know, who knows? So, you know, I just want to give you guys something that's actually pretty fun and amazing and cool. Oh my gosh, I have my... But I, want, but I want some of you that have this kind of preconceived notion of Hyperdimension Neptunia is like, it's a Crunch Chan thing. I don't want it because Crunch Chan is like in the, in the fandom and stuff. I want you guys to understand that, again, Christian, I'm going to say this right now. Christian doesn't speak for any of the other fandoms that he is in. If you all hate, if you all hate a fandom just because a person, an individual is in your fan, is in a certain fandom, it's not the fandom's fault, okay? Whatever Chris does is on him. It doesn't fall to us. I just want to say that right now. I want you guys to actually, I want to show you guys the fun, the humor of these games. And in Mega Dimension, which I love the story of, and that's why I bought the VR version to begin with. I mean, I mean, I could go get the other ones and probably, probably like buy those. I actually could do that. But I want, but I wanted... To show the one, I wanted to play the one that really shows why, that really the one I like that has a mixture of seriousness and and humor. Yeah, that's what I'm all about. Like mixing both humor and seriousness because they both can coexist. You just gotta not make one bigger over the other. With Mega Dimension, there's been there's a balance. You know, Vic, you know. Hypernip to yeah, victory, you know, the third one was like, you know, it was wall it was wall to wall jokes with a little bit of seriousness. But with Mega Dimension, there's more serious in it, there was more seriousness as well as there are more jokes. And more little more little Easter eggs for people who love not only Sega, but the Dreamcast. Those don't have prescription lenses. I use them only very rarely normally, and it is usually just so I can sneak myself into various comic and game events. Since I have them, I should and oh yeah, should show you how there I is going to be a convention episode. <laughs> but there's going to be a gaming convention episode, and it's just like just it's so. 
it's just gonna be like birds sneaking around and what I do at convention and like but people you know mm-hmm. and then I actually said this to one of my friends and they said um will it be a convention in in like G's universe or their universe. I think it should be in I think it should be in game like game industry. I feel like they would have a whole bunch of cons and gaming events because that you know, their world kind of revolves around kind of revolves around gaming. So it would make sense to do it in there. Because if I did it if I did it in G's G's world, which is a kind of representation of ours, a little bit of a little bit of this and that in there. I think it'd be more of me making jokes like, "Oh my God, it's a Neptune cos, it's a Neptunian cosplayer." Oh, you know. And I could, I feel like if I do that, I'm probably gonna push it into a dark place. I'm not gonna. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So I want to do something I'll a little different. One more time. Sorry about that again. My nose is stuffed. I really do feel intelligent when I put these on. It is an encouraging feeling. It is important to look the part, isn't it? I feel as if I could solve any gimmick or puzzle looking the way I do right now. (laughs) The bigger problem is, however, that I cannot see in front of me very well. What do you think of me in glasses? Do you feel that it brings about a special kind of charm? See, now I know this says yes or no, but he actually has a big thing where it's like, uh, well, you, Vert, well, uh, well, you kind of have a, well, certain charm to you. I, I can't admit, I can admit that. Uh, I, 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 I mean, you know, your glasses are fine and everything and, and, and it's cool and everything, you know, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> he kind of has a little bit of a. He kind of has a little bit of a. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I was getting sneezing a bit. Sorry about oh, that. No. You need to eat honey, honey. It was worth the trip. <laughs> wow, that rhyme. No, I'm good. No, I'm good, honey. I always get like a little bit of this. That's why you need to eat honey. I don't normally... Well, I do deal with it, but that's why I eat certain honey to deal with the weather. Eh, I'll beat it, hun. It takes... It just takes me a minute. All right, <laughs> but for you folks, yeah. It kind of, you know... Vert knows that he's stammering because he just... Because he is real blown away by her beauty, and he just... He, they, she gets really close to him, and he's like... uh he almost like leans in against her. He's like, "Uh, Bert. I mean, like I don't want this because I do, I do. But you know, but you know why? See, see now, Bert's the only person he has ever really told his whole entire backstory to. So they have a little bit more of a deeper bond, uh, like that." But, you know, there's going to be, like, a powerful scene in the uh, second episode where he's, like, where he goes, wouldn't, she goes, like, wouldn't your, wouldn't your wife want you to be happy? And not constant, and not constantly be work, and and not constantly be stuck in the same place you were? Wouldn't she want you to be happy? And he goes, he goes like, yeah, but it's just a little harder for me to, to to go to go back to what I used to be before. And granted, with me being, well, you know, me being a former king, it's even harder. It's not like I don't, you know, and I might change this around, so that's why I'm telling you guys this. So he's like, I. I mean, you wouldn't, I mean, he's, and then she just leans in and kisses him, he's like, uh, 
We shouldn't tell the others. Because I don't want them to be jealous. It, it doesn't mean we're a thing. I, 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 I need to, uh, I need to think. Ooh, world spinning. Gonna go back into my world. For I need to chill. <laughs> Again, I'm going to probably change this. I love picking these out to hear you say that. Hmm. This might be a good time to add to my personal collection of fake glasses. If I wear prescription ones again, I might trip, so... Oh, is it already time? I passed so quickly. I would love to stay longer, but... I regrettably must take my leave now. Bert never wants to. Oh, I have an idea. And the thing about Bert is, she will never. She she's like Linda in the fact that she doesn't want to leave uh, G's side. Like she doesn't want to leave his side because of everything he's basically been through. She does care for him, like what. Like one would, like like if they were technically, like if they were technically together, like in a way, that's how she cares for him. And they do go on, they do go on little mini dates when no one's looking. <laughs> if you really liked them, I can wear glasses the next time I visit as well. Again, I would really like one of those drama. I would really like one of those dramas. I wish people could bring out those drama CDs and put them in English, like get the actual English voice cast to do these. But I know that'd be too. That'd be a big tall order to do. But you know, yes, it would just give me more inspiration to do more things. Which the drama CDs are kind of a big, a big way of actually. The drama CDs are actually a very, a very big inspiration as well, because yeah, I have like a lot of, um, I have a lot of material to work with, both in the in the VR events, but I did need a little bit of the extra stuff because you know, it just it just helps a little bit more, especially the I want to touch I want to touch blank all over. You know, the ones with, like, I want to touch bird all over. I want to touch blonde all over. The what want to touch blonde all over one is kind of special. And you'll see why in the, you'll see why in this season. Only if you would like me to do that. What do you think? <laughs> Wonderful. Huh? I will find a few new pairs to wear next time. <laughs> Okay, see you soon. <laughs> I like how they all jump through the portal. Neptune actually just says jump when she jumps through the portal sometimes. Like, in earlier VR events, I always come like that. Just little details because she always says jump whenever you hit the jump button. Hello. Have you been resting? Today, I have something very special I would like to show you. That special something is none other than... Ta-da! It is an album of adorable younger sisters! Again, we're gonna get, we're gonna get into the... I finally finished this album. You can call it the crystallization of my overflowing heart, love, sweat, and tears. Volume 3. Please excuse me. My love for this album has overflowed a little too much. And basically when this happens, uh, G basically goes... He basically goes... Uh, Vert? I mean, the, you know, they're not your younger sisters. They're the other younger sisters. And, and you know... Because there's an actual scene in here where she's like, I know, but they are, she's like, they are my younger sisters as well. 
stuff like that. My first and second volumes were great, but this one, this is the best one by far. Let us take a look inside. I will sit right here, okay? Now, I will invite you into the dazzling world. And, like, if I ever shipped Bert and G together, it'd be more... They would be more... I would say... Their ship would be more... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? What's the word? What's the word? What's the word I am looking for right now? Let me see how long we've been going at this, guys. I don't want to do this for way too long. Oh, shit, it's an hour. I, this is probably all going to be on YouTube. I was going to put it on the other stuff, but no, it's the, it's really long. Now I'm going to do this over. Well, I don't want to do it over. We're just going to kind of go on and play on. My beautiful sisters. Oh, each photo has such dazzling charm. I can hardly contain myself. First is this beautiful swimsuit photo. The lovely sight of the younger sisters all wearing such cute swimwear. Oh, look at Nepgear splashing around in the water. She's usually so calm. See, but, you know, you know in other scenes this would be party, but I feel like this is, this is Bert's way of basically saying... I just wish I had a little, I just wish I had a little sister. Because remember, the CPUs are not made. I mean, they're not, they're not born. They're made. I mean, Rob and Ram are basically, uh, are basically analogs for the, for the DS. Uni is an analog for the, for the Vita. And Nap Gear is just the analog for the game gear. But there's never been like a mini Xbox. I swear. The moment I see Xbox doing a handheld anything, I'm gonna be like, Bert has a sister! Bert has a sister! Oh my god, Bert is gonna have a sister! That so if anybody hears that in one of my videos, don't be surprised if it happens. Okay, moving on. We have some of Uni's photos. Her normally devilish expression, a front for maturity, is fantastic. But the ferocity she exhibits in HDD is just perfect. The way she becomes even more slender after transforming is a crime. The size of her upgraded weapon is magnificent, don't you think? There you go. He goes However, like, she yeah. seems bothered by her transformation. She complains that her chest gets smaller. Next up are Rom and Ram. Rom and Ram. I was from a racing tournament in the Wii. I was a production manager and worked with the twins since they were the poster girls he wasn't, for the event. Okay, but let's be real. He wasn't there for the Rom and Ram thing. But he would have said, uh, Vert, why are they in revealing clothing? They're kids. You know, you try, you know you're know, you going to give people the wrong idea. You know what I'm saying? And she's like, what do you mean? He's like, well, you know, they're going to think you want to sex up, you know, Rob and Ram. And that's not what you want to do. Or stuff like that. I wanted to try and challenge myself by giving their outfits a bit of flair they're not used to having. They might be a little younger than the other sisters, but I was so happy I was able to make some cute little outfits for them. I am almost scared of how powerful he, my production powers can be. But he kind of stopped saying anything else. Even when, though Blonde caught me. And he kind of stopped saying anything else because he just knows... In a way, she know, he knows that she has the passion for all this stuff. So it's just it's just him just going <laughs> Alright. I understand I understand, Bert, go on. 
with me during the event and I had to make a hasty retreat. This photo came out so beautifully that they were all happy in the end. Totally worth it. All of my photos are a personal treasure, and I swear I could never tire of speaking about them. Although there is one regret I still have. Older Neptune told me about this, but while I was busy participating in a cosplay event, well, <laughs> Nepgear and Uni were having a battle of endurance against each other in a sauna. On top of that, they were only wearing towels. The cosplay event was wonderful as well, but if I had heard of this battle beforehand, I could have been able to witness it in person. One cannot bring a camera into a public bath, but if it was a private one, then... No, hmm. no. They would not allow me to take a picture of them only wearing bath towels. <laughs> and, here, and, here's another, and here's another thing about Bert. You know, you think she'd be all pervy and stuff, but she thinks and goes, nah, they wouldn't let me. They wouldn't let me just film them and they wouldn't let me just take a picture of them while they're, while they're in the... While they're in the t when they're in the little pipe public bath, they wouldn't even let me do that. Even if we were in a private bath. I mean, I, like I have no problems being photographed in that way. But and that, and when he's oh. it, and when Vern says she has no problems, he's like, uh, he almost falls over for me. He regains his composure. He's like, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, anyways. <laughs> An image of me in a towel just ran through your mind, didn't it? Maybe. Oh, huh? is it time already? He goes, he goes My like, he goes like, maybe. Uh, well, oh, look at the time. Uh, looks like you have to go. I was so preoccupied with the younger sisters that I did not notice yeah. the time at all. And I gotta be honest with you, whenever they go, G's usually like, He's usually, like, sad when they go because he knows he can't spend time with them because of the gate. And because it only allows him a certain, a certain bit of time. So he's just like, uh, you gotta go, seriously. Especially with, like, him and uh, Noir, it's more, you really gotta go? All right. I mean, he basically, okay, in the first episode, he basically wanted to go to their world. Because he just hated always, you know, they always had to go and he wanted them to stay. And he just said, fuck it, I want to meet them in their world. You know? He kind of had his little, I, I would say he kind of had a little mermaid moment just without the song. <laughs> but if you want there to be a song, give me a, give me a, give me a few days. Do not believe I have fully expressed my appreciation for them, but do you better understand their charm now? This album is a treasure that is full of my most precious memories. Someday I hope to complete an album together with you. He's, he's, like, he's like, what do you mean? It is me. Bert, what wait a minute. What am I saying? He goes like, Bert, wait, wait, what did you Please mean by that, Bert? Completely Bert? forget what I just said. I must be tired. Bert, Bert, A good day to you. Bert, don't go. Don't go. I want, you, I want to hear what you had to say. Pretty much like that. Hello there. He's like, oh, uh, um, and granted, sometimes like it's like a week. When he when he sees them, it's like a week, or like maybe a few days. So there's like a considerable amount of time of when he meets them to when they go. So it's usually like they're like a few days or a week. And with Bert, he was like. Did they say something stupid to Bert? 
Should I? I shouldn't have said. I should have said something. I really should have said something to her. But I. God. God damn it! Why am I so? These guys. God damn it! Why am I so shy? For it needed me to reach out, and I did. Why am I a coward? I'm a man who who has done some amazing things. So many amazing things. And yet I can't even I can't even pull I can't even pull through what it matters. He was kinda having this moment when he actually sees Ferb through the portal. Like he was having this just this speech to himself. Because remember, G's kind of the shut in. So he's mostly like just hating himself, and then he just sees Vert, and Vert just comes through the portal. He's like, "Oh, uh, hey, hey, Vert." Better? Well, do I have something on my face? He's like, "No, you don't have something on your face." Uh, I suppose I do not. <sighs> I apologize. It was strange of me to act that way. After looking at you, what I was so concerned about before now feels so insignificant in comparison. It's like, and Maybe seriously? it's because it is you, or perhaps because you have been with me for so long, I wish to tell you this. To tell you the truth, I have been so worried that after what had happened last time, you may have come to dislike me. Um, I got too excited about showing you the album, and I became too blunt with you without <laughs> thinking of how it made you feel. So until just a moment ago, I had been feeling too afraid to face you, and, well, you see, uh, um, well, either way, I was just nervous. At first, he go, I came here because I was simply he, curious. He goes like, this is like before she says her thing. He's like, Bert, you don't have to be nervous with me because I really do enjoy your company. I don't really have a lot of company other than my roommates. And, you know, you're, they're usually doing their own things. I'm usually just here, you know, doing my own, you know, doing my own thing, playing all these games and just doing what I do. And... Having you and the others around is is more than I could ever hope for. And I know I know you felt like you were just being too blunt with me, but I was fine with it. And I wanted to really talk to you and really explain that it was all it's, it was okay. And you know uh well you finish. You finish what you were gonna say. I uh it was pretty much going to shake out like that. And then this little nugget happens. Yes, about who you are and what you were like, knowing you were someone who helped save the world. Back then, I thought you were a little strange. But over time, it became more and more fun to spend time with you. Your presence in my life has become so important to me. But now... I cannot imagine living a life without you in it. Your presence is so large that it cannot be... He is blushing. Like, through, through what she's saying, he's blushing throughout the whole entire thing of it. He's like, uh, well, I mean, you know, uh, uh, just he just keeps kind of going like that. It's like really silent so she can actually say something. Be contained in my ample chest. Because of this, I have decided. From now on, no matter what, I will continue to come and visit you here. Even if the current gate becomes unusable, I will concentrate all of Leanbox's technological efforts to make it work again. <laughs> Was that a little too overblown? In any case, I believe it shows you just how serious I am about this. Oh! I just had a wonderful idea. Would you like to have a tea party with me sometime? 
Well, when someone says party, it usually refers to a rather large and loud group. Honestly, I only wish to see you. Just us. A party of two. So, player, it is my greatest hope that you will choose to stay with me from now on. See, again, again, it does kind of lean into episode two and how it, how things are going to kind of shake out. Because you're going to see the, you're going to just hear me read it out, but you're going to hear me like read it out to you. But basically, uh, that's the reason why him and Bert don't want to stake out. Because he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to make her feel bad or hurt her feelings or anything. Because he does care about he does care about Bert too. You could say a little bit more so, but eh, things are gonna shake out a little differently. But he does try to sleep in Bert's house with because she only has one bed. He's like, um, you know, uh, you got a couch. I'll I'll sleep on that. He's he's like, mm, no, you can sleep with me if you if you desire that. It's like no, I can't really, I can't really uh, impose on you and use your bed and everything. Um, yeah, but and oh, but that's gonna be its own thing. Yeah, the episode doesn't end until he like sleeps with Bert and like the next episode in, uh, he just goes like, "Why was my nose bleed? My nose is bleeding." And basically, that's how that goes. Anyway, sorry for the background noise. I get it frequently around here. But I hope this gives you a little bit of a... I hope this gives you a little bit of a... of A little bit of a background in the episode, too. When you actually get into it. Because Vert and... Because Vert and... um. Because Bert and D, you know, Bert and G have this kind of almost, almost lovers thing going on with them when they're together, and it's 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 kind of it's a very interesting, it's a very interesting, I guess you'd say dichotomy of it. It's a very interesting like dynamic they have. Like they don't they they're not really. Like, you can say that he's not, he, like, he loves, he loves Bert, but, you know, they're not technically lovers, but they kind of understand each other because of all of Bert's visits. And the others have that same kind of dynamic, too, but with them, it's a little bit more strong, it's, it's a little bit more stronger, I would say. It's a little... I'm not like saying that his interactions with the others are weaker in comparison, but Vert and him have a little bit more. It's a little bit more stronger, just just a touch, because he all can he connects with the others in different ways, but with Vert, he's the she's the first person he opens up to, and really says all this stuff to, so they're kind of, they're close in that way. Also, in the actual version of, like, the VR fit that I was writing, they kiss. They kiss, and, like, literally, they start to, in my original script, they fuck. They fuck. Like, literally, they fuck. But I was like, no, 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 because, one, I can't put the graphic sex there, and, two, it just seems kind of, In a way, it seems a little out of character for him because even though he opened up to her, I don't think they'd be really just be. They would be banging all night. It's just it doesn't seem like that's what G would do yet. And you're probably wondering, Bugsy, what do you mean by yet? I'm like, yeah, you know, yet. And and Vic doing his weird goodnight thing to me, like usual. <laughs> Anyways. 
that dem- again, Vic is a weird person, but he is my best. He is my best friend. Even though he can be a little weird sometimes. But back to what I was saying, like it just you're probably like yet. Yeah, what do you mean by yet? Mm, I shouldn't say. Uh, a writer like me doesn't really show off his cards. He just I'm showing you what I probably wouldn't have enough background to show you otherwise. So we started off talking about dr- project. We started off talking about dreams. And we started off talking about dreams, and we started off talking about talking about Chris Chan, only to end here. Okay, Ansakar Maru, don't 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 cheapen this. I mean, I get. I mean, I'm glad you're showing people your writer process, but you know, think about it. Hey, Ansakar Maru, sometimes you just gotta go with the flow, bro. <laughs> That's your mantra for every day. Yep, and it's never, su- it's never screwed us up before. See you guys later. Oh yeah, I was thinking of making G. I was thinking of making an in character account for G on Twitter. It's not gonna be like a role playing account, but it's gonna be like um, G just kind of showing off um, various pictures of the guys while they're doing things. You know. Stuff like that. I was thinking of doing it for both Facebook and and Twitter. I don't know. Just something I wanted to think about. Just to show that our world and his world are kind of the same things in a way. Just some extra media stuff, I guess. Well, everybody. I'm out of here. Oh, well, Anne's in here, so... Annie, what did you think of my process? What do you think of my writing process? And Wait. Bert's character as a whole. Hmm? What do you think about Bert's characterization that I've done so far? I like it. At least to a point. Okay, to a point. What do you mean by that? What are you talking about? Are you making a video? Yeah, it's part of the video. I've been doing a video. I told you this. I know, I know. It's just you've been on it for so long that uh, i kind of been off doing other things. Oh. But I like Bert's characterization and her mentality of how I've basically done that. What do you think? Um. And hold nothing, and hold nothing back. Sorry, I'm laughing for the. I'm, I'm thinking of this other funny. Um, Vert, I do like how you do make her. Um, well, I don't exactly have much to work on. Mm. Because again, I wasn't paying attention. Plus, I still have that damn that dang headache. Oh. Just trying to still work with. As well. So, unfortunately, what I've got with with your current story, I like how she's the peacemaker. Well, she's not really a peacemaker. It's just the fact that she knows G inside and out. And that was the kind of thing about her that I wanted to kind of give to her more than anybody else, because... You know, in a way, they're both lonely characters. Hmm. So, in other words, she relates to him because of his, their similar loneliness. Yeah. They're kind of stand alone, either apart or together. Mm-hmm. I think that's actually pretty And the cool. fact that he opens, he, he's the one that opens up to her about most of his stuff. Well, pretty much all of his background stuff that uh, go, went into what he is now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think when you relay it like that, it does make it seem good, but it depends on how you write it out. You know? Mm-hmm. 
So, Bugsy, tell us a little bit more about that sex scene. Uh, I'll talk about we're not talking about it here. Um, You're going to forgive me. I'm going to try and actually continue watching this or anything to help diverge from the pain in my headache. It's okay. And I may have figured out why I had it in the first place. All right. But Bugsy, come on, tell me at least the beginning. Does he, like, does he, like... Like, like, do they, like, go up against the wall, or what, uh, like, what happens there? I'll talk tomorrow, I'll tell you later, but, yeah, okay, the beginning of it would have been, they, you know, he gets, they get close, and they start making out. Is that good enough for you? Okay, it's good enough, it's good enough, bro, it's good enough, it's good enough. Just calm down. <laughs> calm down, you're, you're being all, you're getting all. You're getting all aggro on me. <laughs> because you've been asking me, you've been literally trying to squeeze, squeeze that out of me for days now. Okay, not for days, not for days. Just a little bit of it. Hmm? Okay, okay, guys, I gotta mute myself. I and, will mute myself for a minute. And, Anne's got her uh, family. That she's talking to. So usually I mute myself. So I'm going to get out of here now, guys. I'm sorry that this is what this was ungodly long. But I like I like videos like this. And I'm trying to do most of the videos I can before Kingdom Hearts comes in. I still got I still got Smash to get over. And I'm almost done with that, I think. I'm going to get closely done with that. And then, you know, I'm just going to kind of circle back and do the do my Switch games that I haven't beaten yet. But I hope, I hope this has been fun for you guys. I don't really do a lot of big Sunday videos, but I thought, mm, for you guys, you deserve a little bit more. Peace, everybody.